Welcome to Speak Out. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly, representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today we're going to be talking about a very important issue. Um, we've titled, uh, entitled the show Feeding Westchester, um, but we are going to be talking about uh, the needs of people throughout our area um, with hunger, uh, the, the lack of opportunities to have food and the impact on our, our communities uh, and, and those people who live in our communities. And I have as my very special guest, Leslie Gordon, who is president and CEO of Feeding Westchester. Yes, so thrilled to be with you, Sandy. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And um, I had the wonderful opportunity of joining you just several days ago and visiting um, your, your site your, um, um, what do we call it, the warehouse? Is it like a warehouse? We call it Mission Central. Mission Central, okay. Mission Central. And Mission Central is actually, I guess, in Elmsford. It is. And um, it's amazing when you walk in there and uh, you see all of this activity, the volunteers, the food preparation, the go bags, I mean, just so many things. Um, it's very exciting. I've been there before, but I'm always reminded when I go in there of the needs of the public. And so, you know, we live in this very wealthy county mm -hmm. in uh, a part of the state that has a lot of wealth. And yet, here we have all these hungry people. What, it's a what little happens? unsettling what and crazy, right? Right. Um, I love that you visited with us, by the way, and you're always welcome to come back anytime you like. Bring mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. uh, the public is welcome to step through our uh, Mission Central or facility. We give you a private behind the scenes look at the engine that fuels our ability to move uh, now nearly 11 million pounds of good nutritious food across Westchester County every single year to yeah. almost every municipality in Westchester County. So it's our kids, it's our seniors, it's working families who have trouble making ends meet. And you know, what's so interesting is that I often personally bump up against people say, people aren't hungry in Westchester County, right? Well, it's hard to believe that people are hungry because it costs so much to live here. You would think that, you know, that would be a part of, part of the budget. Right? It's, you know, it's tough. People make trade-offs, right? So mm -hmm. hunger isn't something that you can I easily identify or see. It's, a, it's an invisible problem. I, I tell people I would challenge them to be able to pick people out in a community and say, oh, that person is hungry. But it's a real reality. About 20% of our neighbors here in Westchester County don't always know when their next meal is coming from or what you it said, will be. You said 20%? 20%. Right, so one in five mm -hmm. of our neighbors, right, could be mm -hmm. your next door neighbor, in fact, mm -hmm. We've got some stories where uh, we've done distributions of food out in the field. Oftentimes we'll set up as a farmer's market style distribution out in the field. And we're met by generous volunteers on the ground who help make that kind of activity happen. And we've had people who have to um, sort of pull themselves together because they notice a neighbor online didn't oh, know that they right. were someone in need. Right. now know that there's someone who's struggling and oftentimes mm -hmm. these are people who live next to each other in a reasonably affluent community. And so you never really know what's going on for someone behind closed doors, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For seniors, for example, uh, in wealthier communities, they can often be what we call asset rich, right? So they, they can have, have a home big and a home, car, right, right. but you never really know what's going on, right? They might have mm -hmm. trouble making ends meet, and people make trade-offs. Do mm -hmm. I buy medication this month, mm -hmm. which often could be expensive in and of itself? Do I buy food this month? If you're a working family, often parents don't eat so that their kids can. It's a very mm -hmm. real problem. Hunger lives in Westchester County. And I, and I know when we talk about our schools and mm -hmm. um, children have just gone back to school, um, there, I mean, there have been a lot of articles about the lunch line and, and whether children have 
money to be able to purchase, um, you know, one of the school lunch programs mm -hmm. um, and what happens, you know, when they're not in school on weekends. Uh, do we have the same kind of thing? We have so many children that are uh, in, in jeopardy of not having food or not having the right food or not starting out with good food in the morning so that they can really be very active students? It's, it's a real problem, right? Um, you and I both know well that our kids are our future here in Westchester County and in the United States. And so we owe it to them to get them connected to good, nutritious food so that they can progress along the natural development stages and become strong, competent, successful, contributing adults who are able to achieve whatever they dream for themselves. Uh, but the reality is, Sandy, that often uh, nearly 60,000 kids, in fact, in Westchester County will go home on weekends. They'll open mm -hmm. up the refrigerator door, the light will go on, but there's not much going on inside the refrigerator. There might be uh, you know, a quarter of a gallon of milk. There might be half a bottle of ketchup. And so there's no real nutrition in that home. And it's stressful, not only for kids, but also for parents who have to cobble together ways and ideas of feeding their kids. They try and determine what program can I send my kid to this weekend mm -hmm, so that they might mm -hmm. have lunch or breakfast mm -hmm. or dinner. Whose house can they go visit so that they, they might get uh, a good meal? And so at Feeding Westchester, one of the ways that we help kids get connected to good nutritious food when school's not in session is through a wonderful program called the Backpack Program. Well, when I went into <laughs> your Mission Central, yes. um, I think the first thing I saw in a big watermelon box, and I'm thinking, these can't be all watermelons, and they weren't. I've learned that watermelon boxes are really good boxes for you to store things they in, are. right? Yeah. So, um, but inside were all of these um, big plastic bags with, mm -hmm. with um, food, inside because you pulled them out to show me what was in there and that's that's the go bag right the, it the is. bag that so Thursdays and Fridays those bags fan out across the county to after-school programs community uh -huh. centers uh, schools particularly elementary schools where kids get connected to a fun purple colored bag that has uh -huh. the makings for about six to eight kid-friendly, nutritious meals to hold them over the weekend. So it might be cereal and milk. Mm -hmm. Kids love macaroni and cheese. Bags are often accompanied by what we call hand fruits. So there might be apples or oranges or pears or something that's easy to handle and fun to eat for kids because we want to get them connected to produce as well as other foods over the weekends. And we're really happy to be able to do that. It matters, right? How many, how many of those go out, those bags? Do you so have we'll any send idea? out 65,000 of those bags this year, and it's not nearly enough, right? We'd mm -hmm. like to be able to continue to fill the gap and make sure that every single kid who needs access to that on weekends has it. Uh, and we're doing our best to make that happen. So let's talk about what just even with that, those bags that go out to children, how do you get the food? How, how do you, where does it um, come from? Is it, is, is it food that you particularly buy or is donated and money, I'm assuming, comes from various sources to, to try to um, uh, get all the ingredients to go out to our, with our children? It's such an interesting question and a really great story to tell. So behind the scenes at Feeding Westchester, again, we're on pace to distribute about 11 million pounds, if you can think about that this year. To put that in perspective, because it's a lot to put your head around, if you see a tractor trailer traveling on the highway and it mm -hmm. has food in it, that's usually an average about 38,000 pounds. So think about how many hundreds upon hundreds of tractor trailer loads that we're moving across the county this year. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, what I tell people about food that we move is that what we do is both good for people and for the planet at the same time. And so mm -hmm. let me explain. We have about 80 retail partners all across Westchester County who are good friends of ours, so it's Stop and Shop and ShopRite and Trader Joe's and Acme and the like, they spin off good excess food that's perfectly fit for human consumption. We are Johnny on the spot. We bring our fleet of refrigerated trucks and we back up to the docks of a ShopRite mm -hmm. or a Stop and Shop supermarket and we'll pick up 
amazing uh, frozen meat and poultry, good fresh produce, canned goods, and we'll bring that right back uh, to our inspection and sorting center, our mission central, if you will, in Elmsford, New York. And we'll go to work putting that up onto inventory and getting it as rapidly as possible out into the hands of people. We'll collect millions of pounds of good nutritious food that way this year. They would have otherwise ended up in a landfill. In fact, 40% of the food that's produced in the United States each year goes to waste Mm -hmm. and ends Mm -hmm. up in a Mm -hmm. landfill and contributes to methane gas, which has an unfortunate impact on our environment. Somewhere between your farm field, uh, large manufacturers, your grocery store, and interestingly, a fair amount from your own home refrigerator, right? I'm guilty of that too. I'll you know, have the best of intentions when I go shopping at the grocery store to bring something home and uh, I just don't get to it. And occasionally, mm-hmm. ever so occasionally, it'll become what I call a little science project in the refrigerator and it'll go to waste, right? right. right. Um, we also get food from the United States Department of Agriculture. So we'll get several tracker tra- tractor trailer loads across the year from the USDA. Is that pretty much canned food that you would get from them or, or not? Interestingly, it's a really good mix between oh, okay. some canned good items, which are important to mm-hmm. fuel menus in people's kitchens. Uh, but this year and last year, we were the beneficiaries of a large amount of frozen blueberries, fresh frozen blueberries mm-hmm. from the great mm-hmm. state of Maine. We also saw a fair amount of poultry and some frozen pork. And so we're really glad to be on the receiving end of that product and move it to our friends here in Westchester County. So how do they find you in May? How does Maine find you here in Elmsford? Yes, yeah, so that's such a connect? great question, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's a United States government program. Uh-huh. It was established decades ago. And it was there initially and designed to control for the ups and downs in our commodities markets, oh. right? So that farmers wouldn't go out of business and so that mm-hmm. we continue to, on a very basic level, have access to good nutritious food all across the U.S. And so what happens is sometimes there's excess. And so uh, they do an allocations process in the United States. They might say there's 100 tractor trailer loads of frozen blueberries, and New York State might get 10 of those. And depending upon who who the food banks are in New York State, we might get one or two of them uh, because we're right here in Westchester County and uh, we have a specific size footprint. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's all based on a a little bit of a formula. Does your inventory... um, in, in Elmsford look the same or is it always adjusting um, you know what you have on those shelves? You know sometimes it's like the surprise in the Cracker Jack box right uh, so we'll pull up a truck to a stop and shop for example or an Acme or a Trader Joe's um, some of it's predictable but now and again we'll get mm-hmm. some really interesting food that might be new on the market and, and whoever the buyer was for that particular store made some predictions about what was going to be exciting to consumers and it just didn't move for whatever the reason, so we might be on the receiving end of it. Uh, so sometimes there's some interesting surprises in there, but generally um, we know on trend what's going to come in. We always want to make sure that there's representation from all the five food groups in our inventory at any given time, right? So meat, mm-hmm. poultry, eggs, dairy, whole grains, good fresh produce, all those sorts of things in our inventory at any given in time. In fact, 40% of the food that we'll distribute across Westchester this year, none other than good fresh produce. And it's not just, uh, you know, the staples like potatoes, mm-hmm. carrots, mm-hmm. cabbage, things that might last longer. We're really happy to say that there's this beautiful array of fresh produce that's making its way into communities with our help. So it's strawberries mm-hmm. and mangoes and kiwi fruit and great colorful green beans. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Right. Um, we're, we're up here in, in Peace Hill at the studio, and mm-hmm. um, there is a, a Peace Hill Senior Nutrition Program yes. locally here. I, I think you connect with them, but is there something going on with nutrition classes and so on that you've, you've reached out we in do. this area? Um, so great. I'm thrilled that you know about that. So we have a relationship with the Hudson Valley Hospital Center mm-hmm. uh, right here in Peekskill. And so we work to arrange, uh, I think it's a six or eight week cooking class for seniors that kicked off last year. Uh, there's something called the Peter Kelly 
cooking or teaching mm -hmm, kitchen mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. the hospital. Um, and we provide the good fresh produce and some other foods that those seniors are using to learn how to cook and they're so excited. And I love that they come in and they're vibrant and energized and they wanna share stories about you know, decades old recipes. Um, and so it's really exciting and we're, we're glad to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Good nutrition is, is supremely important, particularly in low income communities that we often serve. You know, we, we talk about on the news frequently diabetes, mm -hmm. heart mm -hmm. disease, osteoporosis, those are things that begin and end with good nutrition. And so often mm -hmm. in low-income mm -hmm. communities, there's high rates of diet-related diseases like diabetes or cardiovascular disease because folks don't have good, easy access to good, nutritious food. And so we're playing a role in helping folks manage um, you know, their overall well-being and good health so that they can live their best lives. And that's a role that we're really glad to be able to play. Right. One of the uh, things that I noticed when I you know, went through um, your facility was that you, you seem to weigh everything that what comes in and what goes out. So you, because you told me. Um, we do. How much. <laughs> How much you're you're sending out into the field, so um, that that's a situation where you know exactly what your inventory weighs. We do. Um, so we take really seriously um, how efficient our operation is at Feeding Westchester, and so um, for those folks who haven't had the pleasure of coming to see the mm -hmm. magic behind the scenes, if I can paint a picture, uh, so it's a large warehouse. Often people come in, they say, "Oh, look, Costco." So if you can picture, it looks a little bit like Costco. Uh, we do have a very large floor scale. It's fun for kids who come visit because oftentimes I'll have a group of kids stand on the floor scale and they can see how much uh -huh. they weigh as a group. Uh -huh. um, but it's one of the indicators that we follow. We weigh everything on the way in. Uh, so we track pounds that way and we weigh everything on the way back out. It's a rather sophisticated operation. It's sort of like Amazon. So we're what we call a pick and pack operation behind the scenes. We're at the heart of a network of nearly 300 on the ground partners in Westchester County. Those are your food pantries, your soup kitchens, your shelters, your senior centers, your after school programs, your schools. And so they're able to order effectively from our inventory, generate a sales order, and we go to work picking, packing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a customized order just for them. Mm -hmm. And then it goes out on a refrigerated truck and gets delivered to communities like right here in Peekskill where we're talking mm -hmm. today. I think there's, isn't it a, is it a green truck? It says Feeding Westchester. It is Westchester. an orange truck. An orange truck. It's okay. a big orange truck and it okay. has a green cab on it. We're kind of hard to miss. Oh, okay. Orange right. is the color for hunger. Uh, it's the national color for hunger. We're um, sitting here today um, in a, a really special time of year where we try and draw extra awareness to hunger this time mm -hmm, of year. Mm -hmm. uh, and so just last night, in fact, the uh, Mario M. Cuomo Bridge was illuminated in orange uh, to bring oh, awareness okay. to the problem of hunger in our communities. Right, and that's that's so important to, to bring that to the attention because, as you said, the need need is is great. And one of the areas too that I was I was going through your um, newsletter, and college students. Oh yeah. Now I really hadn't thought about that except when when I did think about it, I thought you know people call my office and they say, mm. you know, they want their children to go to college, but um, and even though in some instances people are able to use our free tuition. Uh, that we established um, uh, for for some individuals within our, our setting, college setting. But there's also then, that, that covers tuition, but you still have the room and board, food, books, all those things school's that you need to. School's expensive, right? School's expensive. School's really expensive. So do we have, I, I really hadn't thought about college students and, and having some problems maybe eating properly or, or getting food? Or? You know, it's so interesting. So there was a, a study that came out of Temple University in Philadelphia back in 2016 called Hunger on Campus. And mm -hmm. what we learned through this study that they did is that uh, more than 30 percent of college students all across the United States at both your elite private institutions and your local community colleges are struggling gaining access to enough good nutritious food, believe it or not. Um, and so mm -hmm. students have told me personally that they'll map out their days based upon campus events just to make sure that they can gain access to food. Unfortunately, what transpires is, is that a lot of these events tend to have pizza, 
and then you go to the mm -hmm, next mm -hmm. event. You've got some Well, more I know pizza. about my events that right? I go to. Yes. Yeah, it's <laughs> That's the best. More pizza. <laughs> it's, I, I love a good slice of pizza. But, so we want to make sure that they've got access to uh, a wide variety of good foods. And so that's where we come in as Feeding Westchester. We have partnerships with Westchester Community College, with Pace University in Pleasantville, with Mercy College in Dobbs Ferry. So what we've done is we've structured, believe it or not, food pantries on college campuses so that mm. students and, frankly, administrators, professors, others working on campus who are also food insecure in those communities can gain access to food and really other resources once they're there. Pace, really wonderful story, last year uh, at their Pleasantville campus, we launched what we call our mobile food pantry. So that's a large truck that shows up in a parking lot and it's a farmer's market style distribution that we do. We bring dairy and produce and poultry and canned goods uh, and folks come and pick food that makes sense for themselves, but they make it into a fun community event and it's actually mm -hmm. run by mm -hmm. students. So we're glad to be able to do it. But mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of really hungry students right. on campus. Very interesting. Um, I, I know that there was a section um, a packing that there were a lot of volunteers today I was there and I have a feeling that there are probably even more volunteers on other days. There are. So um, how does how does one go about about doing that? What what do they do? What do volunteers do? When they so come? Uh, we welcome volunteers uh, all the way down to the young age of, of seven. We like to think that we are one of hmm. the best kept secrets in fact in Westchester County for families and young kids to volunteer together. Uh, and so we, we welcome them to come in. Um, they'll help us repack. So often we'll get food in bulk amounts and volunteers are a point of efficiency for us. We really couldn't do what we do without them every single year. And so they'll help us break down food into smaller household size amounts. Or uh, we'll get food in a, a mixed box or a big watermelon bin, as you described <laughs> right. earlier. Um, we can fit, you know, 10 of us in this bin. <laughs> and so volunteers, God bless them, they go to work inspecting, sorting these items, putting them into like categories so that they can go up on our inventory and our warehouse facility in Elmsford. Uh, so there's different ways you can get involved. You can go to our website at feedingwestchester.org and go to the volunteer section and we've got all kinds of information about opportunities there. If you're a local corporation, a small, medium-sized business, a faith-based institution, mm -hmm. Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, school groups, community groups, individuals, really anybody we welcome coming through our doors annually, mm -hmm. 11,000 volunteers step through our facility to help make our operation go. Oh my goodness. It's kind of remarkable. You probably could never do what you do without those volunteers. We really can't. Right. Um, so there are, I mean, people can organize if if you're in a group, if you're in Rotary or Lions oh, sure. or you work for a company. Come on in, we'd love to see you. Right, yeah. so um, best, best to contact if you're bringing a large yes, number of let people. Yes, let us know, right? So we schedule you in. We have mm -hmm. several groups each day. Um, we do have opportunities on some evenings and some weekends during the month for folks who are working and can't get to us during the week. Uh, but we also have lots of retirees. We have a group that we call the Book Club. The and they, Book Club. The Book Club. And they've been coming to us pretty <laughs> religiously for years. Um, they it has show nothing up, to do with books. Nothing to do with books. Okay. okay. Right? But they gather like a book club. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And so they come, you know, Monday mornings, Tuesday mornings, weekly. Um, and they've gotten to know each other. They weren't friends when they, and they didn't know each other before they came to our facility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now they've been fast friends for years. Um, we've got a group of, uh, I think, Italian grandmothers who uh, were incentivized to come volunteer by their kids who said, listen, stop spending your time shopping, <laughs> right? Come spend time with Feeding Westchester, right. you know, do some good. And so they got incentivized by their kids and their grandchildren, I understand, to come spend some time with us. And so now we have a group of Italian grandmothers who are sharing time in our facility pretty regularly, helping to pack food. Right, that's great, that's great. So we have um, holidays come up and um, I I have a feeling that you're very involved with, with families as they face the issue of um, Thanksgiving, yeah. um, Christmas, whatever holidays. So how do, how do you deal with that? Is there a special focus? It's a tough time of year for anyone, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's tough to be someone who's shopping in a supermarket when you've got the decorations and the advertisements up for Thanksgiving. And if you're a family who's struggling, you're simply focused on just feeding your family for today. 
At Feeding Westchester, uh, we just uh, welcomed a tractor trailer load of frozen turkeys, nearly 9,000 turkeys that we just welcomed into yeah. our freezer. You have a very big freezer. We it was do. really cold. Yeah. I sat at the door and I didn't go in. <laughs> a cold place. It right. is a really cold place, uh, but it, you know, it's super fun. So about 9,000 turkeys landed on us this week. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll send that out this year with probably more than, if you can picture this, 200,000 pounds of sides. So green beans, oh. mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, stuffing will accompany these turkeys. And they'll go out to our agency partners, again, food pantries, some community kitchens will use them and hot meals that they'll serve on Thanksgiving. But, you know, it's the basics. What drives mm -hmm. me and drives our staff team and our volunteers at Feeding Westchester and other supporters just like you is that we're helping people celebrate the all-American holiday, for example, of Thanksgiving. And everybody should have an opportunity to be able to gather around tables and share stories and share important time with each other and take some time out to really talk about what's important in life. And so we're glad to be able to do that. Is this an opportunity for people to also make a financial contribution? I'm assuming yeah. that you can, can do that. And, and that might also, I mean, sometimes people think about those kind of contributions when there are holidays. Sure. We should actually think about that all year long Yeah. Uh, because the problem is all year long. So but. I tell people, Sandy, that hunger doesn't take a holiday. Right. Hunger uh, exists 365 days a year right here in Westchester County in almost every single community. Uh, and so we take very seriously uh, donations and the support that we get. We're able to turn every dollar into four meals by virtue of our expertise, our food sourcing expertise, the efficiency of our overall operation. Uh, and so our largest donor base are individuals just like you who generously mm -hmm. support our efforts throughout the year to make sure that their neighbors have all the good nutritious food that they need. Um, we also receive support from family foundations, corporations. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's a real mix, special events. Uh, mm -hmm. And so coming up on October 24th, is our Evening in Good Taste. It is Westchester County's premier chef tasting event. And so uh, 30 of our oh. best chefs will gather at uh, the address of 1133 mm -hmm. Westchester Avenue. Uh, and so if you're a foodie and you wanna have a good night out, um, come visit nice. us for Evening in Good Taste. You can call us at uh, 923-1100 and learn more about that event, and Evening in Good Taste. So right. we also generate through events. Right, which is great. So, and, and just kind of wrapping up, I'm just thinking about the winter too. What do we do about the fresh, all the fresh f fruits and everything else? Do sure. you start to get a little deprived during the winter time with those, or do you have a great source? So, you know, we're especially lucky. Um, we are very, very close to one of the world's largest wholesale produce terminals based in the Hunts Point section of the South Bronx. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And products comes in there from over uh, 35 foreign countries, almost every state in the United States. And, you know, it's not like we uh, eat during growing seasons anymore in the mm -hmm. United States. It used to be you'd eat local and what grew locally is what you had during a given month. But now in January, you can have blueberries, you can have strawberries in January. Our all right, that's so, great. It's good. good stuff. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leslie. I really just appreciate all of the discussion about our needs uh, for, for f p uh, making sure that people in Westchester and beyond have the food that they need. Sandy, thank you so much. I was glad to be with You're you. You're very welcome. Thank you all for watching. And please, uh, if you'd like to help with Feeding Westchester, I know we put up uh, numbers that you can call. And if you want to, call me at 914-941-1111. Thanks for watching. Have a good evening.